I'm Wayne Carey, and this is The Truth Hurts. Well, here we are for the second episode of The Truth Hurts for the year. We had a couple of weeks rest uh, because, let's be honest, we, uh, we're, we're not as organised as what we should have been. We've been here, there, everywhere. I've been away, you've been away, Ben's been away. So uh, we're back. How are you, Tone? Oh, I'm very well, Wayne. How are you? I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm excellent. Excellent. Why uh, would you be excellent? I'll tell you why. Well, look at look at the attire that I've got on. Yes, I don't know whether as you've the camera that. can pan over By to your way, Nike t-shirt. I don't, I don't know when it, whether anyone's told you this, but you don't have to get dressed up for a podcast. You, well, that, you, la- a last a couple of weeks ago, you came in here with the jacket on. You look like a stiff. <laughs> now you now you look like you're about to go to a, an accounting meeting, which is which is fine. There's nothing wrong with being dressed I, up. I, you know what? Better to be overdressed than underdressed. Correct. Which well, I am okay. today. Now, I'm in a uh, beautiful white shirt and suit pants and RM yeah. Williams. And it's 38 outside, yeah. Yeah, oh, so what? Now, why are you in a Nike t-shirt and a Nike I, I well, it, <laughs> well, that's a very good question because I've been going to the gym. I'm back in oh, the gym. Stop the presses. Ben, hang on a minute. You can probably, you can probably, uh, you can probably tell that. Oh, no, geez, back in the gym. Geez, so, you haven't lost your vanity. So people know... Th- the shoulder operation. So what was it? Five well, or six re- weeks re- ago. Replacement, now. according to you. Replacement, it was. And I'm back in the gym doing some weights. I still haven't got full movement back, but it's getting there. So I'm going to start getting in the pool and getting that going. But what? How does I've, it feel? I've been off. Well, the shoulder feels good. I'm I'm not in any pain. I'm not popping as many anti-inflammatories these days. <laughs> I, I, I'm not touching that one. There. I'm I'm having probably you know, still three times a week. Yeah. But not as often. Yep. There, there are other there are other things that you can take um, to to have that anti inflammatory um, result, yeah, effect for your body. You know, there's uh, there's marijuana oil, which yep. you know a lot of people are taking. Have you and tried by the that? way, prescribed uh, marijuana order? Have I tried it? I did try it a while ago, um, but I've got to go and see a doctor again, and I've got to make. We might talk about that in another episode, but it, it is uh, apparently it is very good for you. Yes, uh, sleep, anxiety, all sorts of stuff. Um, so I'm, and it's natural. Yeah, correct. So I'm going to check that out. But getting back to, I'm off the I'm off the grog. You're off the well. grog. Six, so not only are you in the gym. Sixteen days today. Congratulations. So I'm making myself accountable today because there's no end date to it. Yes. I went to the footy on Friday night. I watched the Swans in Collingwood. Boy, oh boy, weren't the Swans good? They were exceptional. Very good. Swans, uh, sorry, Collingwood, not so good. Uh, we'll, we'll get stuck into that when shortly. Yeah, when you've got Moore and Penelbury and all them making mistakes, you know you're just about cooked. And that's exactly yes. what they had. They're we'll get place. stuck into that in a minute. Yes. Um, so 16 days today. How do you feel? Not one sip. And I cannot tell you the last time, and that doesn't mean I've I've never been a drinker that drinks every day or anything like that, but uh, everyone will know the weather that we've had in Melbourne. Yep. Last weekend, not the weekend just gone, the weekend before, which we, you know, didn't do a podcast on the Monday, and it was a holiday on the Monday anyway. It was. I went down to Torquay and walked past the bowls club down there and you walk past and everyone's out having a having a drink. That was probably the toughest time. So what was I then? I was I was basically a week without a sip at that stage. Yeah. And I walk past and everyone's out, you know, enjoying and you know what it is? It's a, it's a choice. I don't know whether you're the same. I don't know whether you just eat a lot or you Well, we have similar like, drinking habits. Like the amber fluid. But it's it's a choice and it's a habit. And what yep. we what we all do is when the sun's out and Melburnians, I reckon, are as 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 oh, habitual habitual as anyone. When it comes out, or even more so. Yeah, they get out. You know, Sydney probably has a little bit more sun in the winter, so they they're, they're not as yeah. There's not regimented as what Mel Melburnians are when it comes to that. So they're all out having a drink, and I walk past. And, oh, if you're ever going to have one, it would have been two weeks. And even this weekend, I mean, yesterday was a beautiful day. Yeah, but it's just a choice. You. You say, "Oh, nice day. I'll, I'll have a couple of beers," and and that's what I was doing far too often. What, what what would you consider far too often? Far too often. Well, you know, whether it be twice a week or three times a week, and that doesn't matter. Like, I wasn't having 10, 10 beers or fifteen beers or anything like that. But even if it's just a couple of beers or a couple of wines or whatever it may be, it was becoming far too regular. Yeah. And the other thing is, I was becoming for, I, I'm becoming forgetful. You were or you are? Well, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll find out. 
because like I said, 16 days in, I'm, I'm going to continue through. There's no end date. Um, so whether that, that comes back or not. But I was going into meetings on a Friday, as you do. and I'd not, not AA meetings. No. <laughs> a meeting on a Friday. Probably should have. Uh, and sitting down and, you know, having lunch, have a couple of, have a couple of beers and, you know, an important lunch about, a, a, you know, whether it be work or, or other things that you've got going on and wake up Saturday morning and not having a late night, home by dinner time, but, you know, the lunch is extended, you've had a couple of more beers, can't remember the lunch. Well, that's alarming. Well, can't, you know, can't remember the, the conversations or the intricate details of that lunch. Yeah. And I just thought, nah, it's time to just go bang and, and not have a drop for a little while. So I'm in that phase. I've joined the, I've joined the gym again, which is just downstairs. Yeah. Um, and I feel great. Starting to use words I haven't used for a little while. Well, you look better. And feel more energised. Yep. Uh, sleeping better. Are you uh, are you a better father? Well, I th- I think I think you are if you're more in tune with, you know, absolutely everything. I mean, if you come home, you know, from a long lunch and you get home at and dinner time, you're probably not, you know, present. Run, run, well, probably not as present as you should be. You're not yeah. running running outside and having a kick at the footy or, or going to have a shoot few shots of the, you know, the basketball on the courts or whatever. You're probably getting home. You're having dinner and you know. Hitting the fart sack. Yeah. Well, I, I take it Jess is probably much more better in terms of your relationship. <laughs> okay, Dr. Phil. No, no. We didn't, we didn't need to take it there, you toss. No, but, but you know what? Often Just, our partners... It, it, helps, it, helps, it, it helps in a lot of areas. And by the way, you should take a leaf out of my book by the look of you. You've got the red nose, the red head. Yeah. Okay, well, it's just the way I was. My DNA is. Has anyone ever told you that you look like Donald Trump? Yeah, very uh, a lot of times, a lot of people, and you being probably the biggest you've, standard. You've got Every a, time we get into a lift or there's a crowd, <laughs> you turn around and what? You've got belittle a, me by the the colour of my hair. You've got a, my I, skin. I know you're on the mosh. Right? I am on the and mosh, the, and the hair has grown back a little bit thicker, and it looks good. It looks good. It, I'm not sure about the undercut because it looks like you have got a possum on your head. Oh, that's okay. Because it you, is, it are is you accused the great it, Shane Warne of having a when, possum? Well, he did have a possum, but when it's windy, that flaps up like Trumpy's. Yours does. Yeah, so that's okay. I'm just yeah, saying. Hey, if I was Donald Trump esque and I had his wealth and his power, I'm walking down the street every day looking like Donald. The Trump. other thing that uh, happened, and I, I tell you what you do when you get this call, and I, there's a lot of spam going on. There is a lot of spam. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, do the, you get a lot of text through? messages at three AM and then the calls? Well, you get you get all sorts of things sent now, and you don't know whether they're right or wrong. And you get messages saying, "Oh, you know, you've got a problem with your bank, or this, or that, or you know, all sorts of things." So I've had a message yeah. come through on my phone the last week from a senior. Was sergeant. there a mobile number? There was a mobile number, but it said "ring this number." Yep, which was a police station. And said, uh, ring senior sergeant, uh, such and such, uh, you know, it's a sensitive matter and has it on the bottom. From which police sensitive. station? Well, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, just give the bloke a pump up. Well, give the bloke. Yeah. It's a bloody police station. It's a whole, there's a lot of police that work there. I'm anyway, not going to talk on. about who sent the message. Well, I thought it was spam because you get so much of it. So yep. I, I blocked and reported <laughs> the spam. And as you, as literally through the production meeting outside, literally as you saw, I I got the phone call, private number, which I don't often answer, and I answered, and it was a senior sergeant saying, and I don't know why, because I haven't done it. You you, you yeah, know yes. whether well, you know whether you've <laughs> done something that, that a well, sergeant well, should be calling, but it could be a parking ticket, it could be a speedy. You, you don't know. Um, could be something you forgot to do on the piss. Well, yeah, it could be one of those things that I forgot. Uh, six more than sixteen days ago. So who knows? So, <laughs> so I get the call and the, the heart just drops a little bit. You, you know, skip a couple of beats what, and what you have go. I done? Yep, and he and he says, uh, just ringing about your car got broken into so many years ago, and the, the the guy that broke into the car he dropped one of his little cigarettes in the car. So they got the DNA, they caught the guy and they got the DNA off the cigarette and he admitted to breaking into the car. This is in your old place. In this, this, is, this is a while ago. And you, we're talking years ago. 
And they said, we've got him. And I said, is that all it's about? And I, <laughs> I said, by the way, what did he, I said, what did he take? Has he still got that on him? And he, he didn't. He just took a bit of loose change that was in the car and he didn't really take too much. And, um, yeah, but it's one of those phone calls that you, you know. You just, Your heart sinks. I know there's people out there that would get that call and not have any, you know, worries whatsoever, but. You know. I think a lot of people sit in traffic and they turn and go, oh, there's a police car over there. And well, they go, oh, what have I done? Yeah, and you don't know. Like, it could be, I don't know, you got caught because we've, we've all done this and there's cameras now that are getting people sitting at the uh, traffic lights. You know, just even if you just pick up your phone to look at a text message at the traffic light, there's those cameras. So it could have been a call about that or anything. Yep. But um, Anyway, I, I'm breathing a little easier. Really? So I'm, I'm good to go. I'm feeling good. So what happened to the uh, to the alleged thief? Well, he's he's got to face court. He's in, and froth, he's he's, in froth and bubble. He's uh, he's a repeat offender. Oh, he's a recidivist. Apparently, I've, I've, uh, <laughs> I, I asked the guy. I said, uh, you know, uh, is, is there other things that he's on? And he said, yeah, there are. Because I said I didn't want to press charges, and he said, well, yeah, there's other well, it's, things. It's actually very kind of you, considering that somebody had broken into I, your I car. did ask the question. I said, is this has he hurt anyone or? Like, as in, he's, is he a crook or was he yeah, just Yeah, is he a crook or is he just a guy that, you know, is down on his luck and needed yeah. a bit of loose change? You know, and if that's the case. And that and that's the other thing that's going on. I don't know whether you walk down Chapel Street or Clarendon oh. Street. The amount of, you know, homeless people out there, it, it, is, it is becoming a, a pandemic well, and it, it it's, is... It's American-like. It, it is sad. Yeah. Really, really sad. And I, I in actual fact, I don't even like walking down... Chapel Street too much anymore because of that reason. Yeah, and got I... Got to be something done to fix. I totally understand. And the other thing is, how many shop fronts have a full lease sign out the front with homeless people either begging and or sleeping in shop fronts, mm. you know, around the jam factory, which was once, once a thriving metropolis, and suddenly we've got Chadston, which is its own suburb, or the city, and now Chapel Street is just a really dirty... Yeah, shitty yeah. spot. Well, it's not. It's not dirty because of they're, 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 they're people. You've, you've got to understand they, these people. There's varying different reasons why they're where they Understandable, are. Understandable. Some yeah. are self inflicted. Mental um, health. Yeah, there's all sorts of things, and I I find it you know very difficult. I I don't feel intimidated walking down Chapel Street, but I certainly know my five year old son Carter feels you know a little yep. bit uh, scared, and I know Jess has, and and other people do when they walk down there so anyway it's it's something that um you know we well I, I guess if we talk about it maybe you know if we talk about it more they might be able to uh, fix it up a little bit but let's get on to uh some footy yep and hey, talk could about I, could I just digress for one moment yep in terms of your alcohol abstinence have you locked in a date to have your next drink and or is your bank balance looking healthier for it no i haven't locked in a date i'm leaving it open so there's I, I look. I'm at least going to do six weeks. Yep. Um, and then where that goes from there, we'll wait and see. And peer pressure. And, and I've also got other people. Like I've I've got uh, relatives that have that have sort of uh, joined in, and I've got mates. Well, you've you're now saying you're going yes. to join in. So you've I've had ten days off it. Which you've is, now become accountable. Yes. Well, to myself and to other people. You know, you've just you you know what you've got to do though. Here we go. Well, you've just got to say no more often when someone offers you some tucker. Some tucker? <laughs> <laughs> why, you're, why? you're allowed to say no. Well, hang on. Why don't you're, you like t- a lab- why? you're like a Labrador. Why don't you tell, put, tell some, a- put some food in front of you, you just got to eat it. <laughs> why don't you tell all the fans you walking around uh, the inner suburbs of Melbourne showing everybody your abs after your salarium? Oh, oh, yeah, of course. That's natural. <laughs> well, actually, we've got a podcast for that in a couple of weeks about your skin colour. Plenty happening. In the world of footy. Plenty. And but plenty to talk about. Okay, but let's... I, I want to talk about... I, before... Um, look, there's other footy shows and there's other podcasts that talk about the, the game from game to game. Um, we're not going to do that. We're going to talk... But I, what I w- do want to talk about, the fact that the AFL is just so compromised. Yes. I, I'm a bit... I'm a bit lost with where the AFL's at. As a whole? I or really am. Specifically? I, I, we, we've spoke to Peter Jess... A couple of weeks ago, around the concussion, um, I, there, there's just still so much confusion around. I think that topic. I think there's so much confusion still around what's a reportable offence and 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 what's not. 
we've seen other we've seen players this weekend be reported for for really small things. Could players la- could players players last week got off. Oh, uh, George Hewitt and Lockie yep. Neal. Yes, yep. correct. So they got off with fines. Yep. Yet players have been reported for similar things this weekend. So if they don't get off with fines, then once again, we're all up in arms and we don't know what the hell's going on with with uh, these rules and how they've and how they're umpired. I oh, totally agree. Can I, I want to bring up something from Saturday's game between Hawthorne and Essendon. Now, Jane Sisley, the Hawthorne captain, he has tunnelled Andy McGrath. And then he's kicked him on the way down and Michael Christian and the MRO have decided a one-week suspension for Sicily. He's kicked him. Where the hell... What what precedents have they set for a kick and a tunnel in play? Yeah. Was it that bad? Oh. Mark Grah just got up and took his kick, didn't he? No. If you look at the replay, Sicily has kicked McGrath on the way down. Yeah. He's kicked him. Hard. Well, does it matter? Well, it, well, Tony, yeah, it does. Well, a, a kick is a kick, Wayne. Well, it can be a little, a little toe tap, but or it can be an actual kick. No, I, it, I, it's do you want me to show you kick. the difference? Do you want to get down there and I'll show you the difference between a toe oh, tap okay, and a Ma- kick? Okay, Mike Tyson. No, but there's a difference, Tony. Uh, but Wayne, there's, you, called, you there's watch a, a thing called there's a thing called force. Yes. Yeah. And but, how much force did it have? But then we, we anyway. talk about intent. And I just, yeah. I'm really disappointed. So it's a bit like the punch in the gob. Little kid, oh, yeah. Look to Lockie Neal. Yeah, so there's once again, it's just the inconsistencies around all of this, and that's all. That's all that we want as football supporters, and becoming and and lovers. Although that that love is waning, pardon the pun. Yeah, because uh, of the game. Yeah, it, it it is because of the inconsistencies and the inconsistencies, inconsistencies still around holding the ball. Yep. I mean, it, I was at the game Friday night. What got paid one second didn't get paid a minute later. Like it's, it's frustrating. Yeah. And I understand where the fans and you can hear that. You know, you hear the fans and you hear the boos and it's yeah, it's actually there was a really good one from. I it's think, annoying. Yeah, from the Giants and your old footy club, the Kangaroos, on Saturday in Sydney, and a from memory, a GWS player it was running through the middle and had taken a bounce. The North Melbourne player tugged at his jumper and couldn't hold him, couldn't retard him. And then the Giants player then had re- retrieved the ball after the bounce and they paid it holding the ball. But he, he was given the ball back and had 95% control of the ball. So, as you say, the inconsistencies yeah. are just infuriating a lot supporters. A lot of talk uh, during the week around the, should there be three grand finals, a few interstate teams. That, uh, was that Andrew Pridham, the uh, I Sydney think so. president? Which, and by the way, Andrew, I totally concur and agree. I wish we had three grand finals in 1998 because <laughs> it would have been 2-1. Well, at St Kilda and Collingwood in 2010. Correct. So, you know, there's uh, – I, I actually don't mind the argument. The one thing about having three grand finals, by the way, you the best team will win. Where, as I think that – and this is sort of what – we love about our game as well. The underdog can win grand finals, and they did in '98 against us, and and plenty of and underdogs. Bulldogs have, in '16. There's been plenty of underdogs that have uh, won grand finals. Yet, if it went for three, that doesn't happen because so you get more of a consistent. So you would be open to it, only because we lost '98. If we had won that, I would have said <laughs> no, keep it the same. Um, but the compromised AFL yep. that we have, I mean. You know, a lot of people have, are keen to hear your opinion well, on this. Well, you've just got to play each other once or twice. Agreed. Right? If you get home ground advantage, if you finish, if Geelong finish in a position, don't worry about that. They should get a home ground. I mean, you, you go back. You We're talk GMHBA. about HBA. Yes, they should be able to play finals there. 100 percent if they want. And I understand, and especially now that their grandstands finished. But I know not as many people can go, but. You just cannot have, and you and I don't believe you can have a situation like we had last year in the grand final, where Collingwood play the grand final on their home ground against a side that plays three or four games a year maximum on that ground. Yeah, you just can't. You can't have that. We know it's an opinion. anomaly. We know it's an anomaly, but how do you fix it? Well, you just play the grand final somewhere else on a neutral ground. That's how you fix it. But there's there's so many elements to our game that are like that. And it is so unfair, and that's that's the other. I think that's the other part that supporters 
out there are getting frustrated with because they understand. I mean, the draw itself. Yep, compromise. So many things. I mean, this stupid zero round that we played. You didn't play, like it. What was the point of it? Well, it's to promote football in the and then every and, and and then there's teams that had played, you know, already had a game under their belt. I mean, you know, yeah. it just just Look, wasn't I, right. I, I like the concept. So, do you think that Melbourne had an advantage over the Bulldogs? Yes, cool. Because they'd beaten Sydney the previous week. No, they got oh, sorry, beaten they by Sydney. Got beaten, but by they'd Sydney. played a game. Yeah, they'd played a game. Correct. You don't think that's an advantage? Yeah, I think it is. Correct. Yeah. So you know all this rubbish and you know trying to reinvent the wheel has just got to go, and that includes you know all this Tiggy Touchwood crap that we're we're and and I, you, you, the, the wheel is turning. People are getting frustrated with what is going on, and people are people are I think tuning off and yeah. I don't like that because this is the game that you know gave me so much and, and I love the game and I you just yeah I just wish it were, I just wish it was fairer yeah. and I think and I think it's an easy fix I think a lot of people are in agreement with you in terms of you know say I think it was uh, Friday night Collingwood Sydney I watched the first quarter missed the second missed the third and then watched the last half of the last and I think a lot of people are finding the same whether the game is too long, whether there's tiggy touch with stuff, as you say, and or people aren't going to the game. I mean, I, yes, they are, but they're frustrated with the game. I think it was uh, – I think that might have been a first as well on Friday night. The first time I'd been to a game in a box <laughs> and not had a frothy. Really? Yeah. Did you feel better about yourself? Very different. Well, I, well you went with Dave well, Swan. Yeah, well, I, and Swanee didn't have a, a beer either. Because he's got a big fight coming up. Like, so we're going to do a little special on uh, footballers and boxing. And, Can't you know, wait to get stuck in yes, that. Yes, we've got a, you know, uh, Tyson's got a big fight coming yes, up with Jake, uh, Paul. Jake Paul. Yes. So we'll do a little 20-minute uh, uh, special on all of that because, uh, yeah, Love Swanee's it. fighting Daisy and, you know. You've Pettiford's got, fighting Mitch fight, Robinson. Yeah, and all of that. So we'll talk about all of that. Um, hey, the other things I want to bring up from Thursday night, which was... I'll I've, tell you what you do, do. You, I ended up eating about... Four party pies and four sausage oh, yeah. rolls and but you had four scones. Food. You had yeah, dinner. Well, I, well I'm at working. The it. Yeah, I know, but I'm right. working it off. I work it off. What? What are you saying? <laughs> you're just projecting your uh, insecurities back onto me. <laughs> you're very a, good at that. You're. A, you're. A, you very can good. be an a hole sometimes. I'm very boring too. Apparently. Well, so I'm so not, you mate. Now that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> realised I'm not uh, not funny at all without a couple of beers in me. Oh really? Oh, you well, you have to work on that. Um, now, Wayne, uh, you actually Wayne. put a tweet out on Thursday night, I think it was, for Carlton Richmond, mm-hmm. and it was in relation to the umpires barracking for Carlton. No, well, I, that was after my first tweet. Yes. Of which I said, by the way, of the, the commentary around that game. Carlton Richmond? Carlton Richmond. I sat there listening to the Fox and I thought Jack Rewalt did a really good job. He was articulate, spoke yep. really well. Good I think questions. He, I think he went far too far the other way because he didn't want to sound biased towards Richmond. Yep. So they were all pissing in Carlton's pockets, telling them, oh, you know, they're, they're doing this well. And don't get me wrong, Carlton contro- controlled most of the game, but Richmond had their time where they could have put a couple more goals on. It was all Carlton, all Carlton at half time. Guess who led the game? Richmond. Yeah. Richmond were one point up. Okay, so Carlton probably could have been a couple of goals up. But there were two teams out there, and the fact that Carlton couldn't put them away, yeah. you've got to talk about the other team. I was just and, – and every this love fest that we all have for the Blues at the moment. I've tipped the Blues to finish in the finals the last five years. Yep. They proved me wrong for four of them. They got there last year. I'm wrapped for them. Made the preliminary final made a great account of themselves yeah. and they've started this year really well. Okay, they've they've played some good footy. Let's, they've played some shocking footy in those two games as well. They have. By the way, but they're, they're good. It's been really good. And I'm wrapped that they're two and zero. So this has got nothing to do with the Blues. I hope the Blues play finals footy. I think it's a great thing. But could everyone just stop pissing in their pocket telling them how good they are? It's like the commentators are barracking for them and I reckon in the second half, and yes, Lynch got a couple of free kicks for Richmond early in the game, so I understand that for all those... Blue supporters out there. They got their uh, freebies. Yep. But late in that game, in the last quarter, the Blues got a couple of really soft free kicks that just weren't there. Yeah. And and in the end, the Blues win by five points or whatever it was. So, 
you know, it just seems everyone's on the blue bandwagon, you know, this new shiny, this new shiny toy that they yes. want to win that's a big powerhouse club. Just be, just call it as it is. Yeah. Good on your blues. Good on your Vossie. I'm wrapped for Vossie. Um, and rap for them, but it looks a lot calmer this year. I just Bossie. think that it. Uh, I just think that they're everyone's up their bum. Well, actually, you bring up a good point because I actually found that with Collingwood and Sydney, and I was listening to the Channel Seven broadcast through uh, Fox Sports, but I found some of the Channel Seven commentators were far too biased towards Collingwood. Sydney was by far the greater team. You were there live, yep. So you would have seen stuff that we don't see. Should on have the, won by a lot TV. more, yeah. And Collingwood was very, very disappointing. They were. And uh, like I said at the top of the show, when you've got, you know, players like Moore, Pendlebury, Pendlebury. Pendlebury turning the ball over, Moore turning the ball over. Yep. Switching know. play and kicking to a Sydney yeah, um, yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they were they were ordinary. So, you know, Brisbane have lost their first two games. Collingwood lost uh, first time in the history of the game, apparently. Yeah, I read the that. The two sides that have made the, two, the grand the final. Grand yeah, finalists. grand finalist have gone zero and two. So based on that, Collingwood being the biggest... Club in the land. Where do you see them at the end of the season? Um, well, let's if if you break Collingwood down over the last two years, I'm interested to see how McRae reacts. This is the yes. first adversity that he's actually, and it's only two games. Yeah, it is, but he's you know happy go lucky, Mister Positive in every single way. Now, um, I want to see the reaction from him and and this group because. You know, they've won so many close games, yeah. you know, over the last two years and been an unbelievable effort and good on them and they're, they're the premiership side of last year. Now, you know, we'll find out, you know, how this group and how he is a coach and a yeah. young coach and still learning as he's going, how he reacts to this 2-0. and zero. I will say this, though, on Bris- in Brisbane's defence, in nine, when we lost in 1998, I think we lost the first two or three games in 1999 for memory. And went on to win it. Okay. So, Good stat. Yeah. Well, it's funny because McRae, I think, keeps his cards close to his chest to a degree, but he's actually very giving in a press conference after the game. And he's, he's I wouldn't say manipulative, but he's, he's a, he, seduct, he seduces the media in. He's goes, good. Goes he's to good, close the door. He's a good laughs. performer. I like it. I, I, yeah, I like he's it. He's been, yeah, he's been, he's been awesome. But um, and his forecast, his, his forecast changes. I think both have the ability to bounce back and still clearly make uh, finals and top four. There's no question about that. Well, well, are they drinking their own bathwater? Are they hungover from last year's premiership? I don't buy into that. And the unfeeling of the flag. I don't. Well, I buy into that. That that may have changed. Like th- that might have been programmed from maybe being a bit later in uh, on the format. Of Friday night, yeah. but it got pulled back a little bit earlier. Well, in the end, it didn't work anyway, did it? Well, and plus, I think they did it at quarter past five, where no one could see unless you're at the well, ground. That's, that's what I just said. Yeah, so well, you got to listen to what I say. Oh, I Tony. listen every time you speak, Wayne. Yeah. So all in all, the the first round of footy, even though it's really the second round of footy yep. for some teams. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, Anyone jumping out that you you think oh well you know they've they've improved well, clearly the Gold Coast Suns have improved yeah, you've got to give it. them a little bit of love well done to Adelaide for fighting back um, Damien Hardwick's clearly given them some confidence and some structure and um, well, he's done something well uh, just his presence given what he's done in the game has oh, clearly given this group um, a great deal of confidence and good on them. To go two and zero. Don't yeah. think they've ever have they ever done that before. I think they might have. When are uh, they G- second on the ladder? Ablett was there. They might have won a few games early yeah. in one of the years that he was there. But he, I'm wrapped for them. Um, Port Adelaide did what they had to do against West Coast. How many other surprises? You know the Bulldogs. It's only oh. one game, and they hadn't played. As I said, Melbourne had the yeah. advantage. But you know, there's a lot of question marks about these. Once again, I think there's probably 15 teams. 14 teams, I'll say, can make the eight. Yep. 14 teams. I tell you, what did you like out of the weekend? What did I like? Um, Player and or club? No, I, look, you know what? I like the young talent. There's some young talent at North. I like Reed. I liked his game for West Coast. Yep. I thought, you know, he, he, he showed enough to, 
you know, I guess all the hype around him being the number one pick. So it, it, there was plenty to like. Yeah. Um, there was some really good footy. What there was a lot of blo- old footy club? A lot of, lot of blowouts. Which, yeah. which old footy club I just spoke about? No, the Kangaroos. Yeah, yeah, I said. There's a lot to like about them. There's some young kids there. Did they go straight? Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Yep. You know, they, they, had, they, they have too many flat patches. Yeah. They can play some really good footy, but the, the, the levels, the gap, and Clarko talked about this, the gap is, um, is still f- too wide yeah. between their best and their worst. And I listened to Alistair Clarkson just on my old club during the week speak about that middle tier, and Cam Zerhar is one of those, that middle tier that have to have career best years for the Kangaroos to improve immensely this year. You can't be relying on she- I know she's the one the BNF, but he's in his second year and Wardlaw yeah. and all these guys. Don't worry about and those Larky. young kids. Yep. No, Larky's in that middle tier, but he's he's sustained it now for a couple of years. So Larky has reached a, a, a high level, all Australian level. Yep. So he he maintains that, and then that middle ki- uh, middle tier. I mean that includes Simkin and all that. And I know he didn't, play, but. There's, there's Zerhar and there's a heap of guys in there. Even Bailey Scott, all of those guys have to have career best years yep. for the Kangaroos to really, really improve. And I'm li- I like the way Clarko did it in his press conference. He's just sort of put it back to them and said, this is what we have to do. And, and it's true. And that's the same for every club. Yeah, Your superstars are going to deliver what they deliver. And then that, that middle tier have to all improve together. Yeah, Not one of them. Not two of them, but a, a group of five of them, and then you get then you get some real results. Well, so that's where they that's where they find themselves. Well, and it's really good counsel from you, King. Uh, the other thing is um, their opposition. You've called me Wayne. You've called me King. Yeah, well, Wayne Wayne King. <laughs> I'm not going down that path <laughs> now, Dark. <Yeah. laughs> now the other thing is their opposition on Saturday. I tell you who I thought was fantastic was Jesse Hogan. We know he's at his third club, but he has. Taken that forward line at GWS and turned it into his own. I know Dave Matthews would listen listen to this podcast, but he emailed me well, yesterday. Well, did he? Well done, Dave Matthews. Well done. He took a chance on Jesse Hogan. Yep. They took Jesse Hogan from Fremantle. We yep. know we know Jesse had talent, Melbourne. We know we know he's gone through a few. Well, battles. You, you gave him some advice yeah. when he was at he Melbourne. He is. He is a genuine. He is. Arguably, I'd have to think about it because it's off the top. Yep. I think he's the best contested mark in the game. Yeah, he's a star. Now, he's, you know, he's got the stuttery run-up with his goal kicking, but, you know, his work rate and his marking is exceptional. He's a gun. Yeah. The way GWS have got him playing now and last year and, you know, a little bit the year before, I mean, this is a great turnaround. This is a great story. This isn't getting the uh, plaudits that it should be getting. So, well done, Dave Matthews. Yep. Ring him and tell him I said that. Because yep. I, he listens to this show anyway. And your old mate, Jason McCartney? Yeah, I'm not... Did Jace have anything to do well, with it? Well, he's loose manager. Yeah. But so, I, uh, reckon, I reckon he'd, he would have had to tick it off with Dave. But yeah, I, of course. And, and, well, and okay, well, well done. Well done, Jason, then, as well. Yeah. Oh, no, and you know what? I wish the mainstream media would understand the impact that Jesse Hogan has had on himself, but also his teammates. Exactly. They're showing... By the way, they're... Yeah, they are going yeah, very are well. Sleeping yeah. giant. Although they're, <laughs> they're, not a, they're not asleep, are they? They're, I mean, you know, they were a kick away from a grand final last year. And the way they finished the year, they've yep. started this year. They're quick. Yes, they are. And Jesse Hogan has kicked 10 goals in two games, which I think is the first forward since Tony Modra to do it in the 90s. Really? Yeah. Oh, so they've got Callum go. Brown, Jesse Hogan, and then they take the heat away from Toby, Toby. Green. Yeah. So he's a freer... Yeah. To perform magic like he does. Yeah, no, they they're one that really stands out. Sydney, uh, as we mentioned before, you know oh, they they, make they look good, look silly, but yeah. they're young. You know they they talk about their middle tier, and then their superstars who, and even Heaney has to, I reckon, go to that next level. Yeah, we know yeah. that he's he's had patches in years, but he was brilliant the other night. Oh, his marking ability. So, so they've they've had guys that have had patches in years and shown their ability, but see Nick Blakey was quiet the other night. And you know he's one he was of the great against Melbourne. It, correct. So they've got a they've got a group that if they go to the next level, you know, look out Sydney. So in terms of Amadi and McDonald, I mean, you're the big forward. Um, where do they can they improve? Do they need to improve? Well, they have improved. They have, but can they but, go to another level? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, all of a sudden when they go forward, they look for 
the best option. Yep. They haven't got that beacon there called Buddy. Yep. So they don't just – it's just an easy thing to just go to him and go to him sometimes when it's a wrong decision. So, you know, all of a sudden they've got that, that balance going forward now I think is a lot better and freer and the shackles have been taken off those younger players to actually lead to a space that they should be leading to and not getting in the road of, you know, one of the all-time greats. Yep. So uh, they they look really, really good. And you know who I love out of the Swans, who I'm sure you will too, to have in your side, Tom Papley. The decision he made to stay with the Swans... Mate, he was shit ass the other night. Oh, you reckon? He didn't play well. That That's the thing. He, wasn't, he didn't play a good game. He hurt his knee, but came yeah. back, had him in my multi. He got a goal. Wouldn't believe it. Talking about... I had a multi. And? Gamble responsibly. <laughs> but I had a multi and... All of the legs, I, I tipped Collingwood to win from 1 to 39. So th- that was the only leg I didn't get up. And I don't know why, because I actually tipped Sydney um, in, in tips that I do. Yeah. I tipped Sydney, but in my multi, I don't know why, maybe because Swanee was, you know, nudging me. <laughs> he was next to me <laughs> saying, oh, yeah, Collingwood, Collingwood, Collingwood. So in the multi, I had six individual goal kickers, got them all up. Yep. Um, but didn't, uh, yeah, didn't get the win. Well, speaking of gambling responsibly, is there a certain platform that you use that you're inclined no, to... there will be. Watch this space. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good. Now, speaking of Collingwood, the 1990 Premiership coach, Lee Matthews, made some very interesting comments last week and said that the AFL should introduce a send-off rule. This was after the um, Jimmy Webster and Jai Simpkin uh, discussion, uh, concussion yep. discussion. What yeah, do you think about I don't. That? I don't like the send off rule. No, I don't. we've changed. We've changed too much, and it and it. You, you would have to be categorically one hundred percent correct to to enforce it. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm. And what send off rule and not allowed to bring another player so you play one short. Yeah, I'm not sure of the intricacies, but he just said for what. Um, for what Webster did to Josh Simpkin should be a send off rule. I'm not sure that we should. Okay, so if that, rule. but that, like I said, you're allowed to bring another player on, or you play one short because that's then that's the real. That's penalty. like the, the ice hockey sort of shit stuff, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it the same as soccer as well? Yes. Yeah. For a certain period, I don't know whether that works. Rugby, sin bin, ten minutes, whatever it is. Yeah, I don't like it. You don't like it? No. What about a ten minute sin bin? Let's just copy some more other sports. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan. No, of I it. don't like it. No, neither do I. The other thing is, and you've obviously played the game at the highest level, as we know, 272 games. If you, say, knock out Jai Simkin or an opposition person, do you then feel, would some players feel guilty for doing that and it would affect their game and their mindset? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of players can't. Hand, once you report it, um, just plays, in, it plays on the mind. You're less for the, likely for the to going harder for well, the you're game. Less, well, you're less likely to play. Not too many players after they're reported go on and play a really good game. Mm. Very few. Hey, Maybe hey. guys like Dermy, <laughs> Reese Jones, <laughs> Dipper. Yep. There all might, the, all there the hard might, men. Might be a few other. Yeah, there might be a few out there that have played. I reckon Plugger's probably gone on and kicked 10 after he's been reported. Oh, I think he's one out of the box. But the other thing, Barry Hall, after he uh, belted Brent Staker, had a shocking game and broke his hand. Did he? Yep. Well, there you go. So we'd, And by the way, talking about, like we said, we talk about Barry Hall uh, in the little special we're going to do on uh, footballers and boxing. Hey, now the other thing is, but you brought up uh, Dermot Burton, the great Hawthorne legend. Did you notice him in that um, Kia ad that was broadcast two weeks ago? I did. Well, did there you was like Buddy. the ad? I did like the ad. There was Buddy. There was Alexander Volkanovsky. There was Damien Oliver, Kerry O'Keefe, Wendell Saylor, John Aloisi, Steve Waugh, Dylan Alcott, and Dermot Burton. Mm. Now, where was Wayne Carey? Couldn't afford me. Oh, really? <laughs> Dermy's a legend. Dermy was he is my a legend. He was my hero growing up. One of my heroes. Yeah. yeah. Or the number twenty three. I, like, I like the. Uh, I, I, I actually, by the way, one of the great ads. Great ad. I, Nelson Hotel in Bondi. I think that's one of the best ads I've seen. Yep. Brilliant. Very, very, very well put together. Whoever devised that is a marketing genius. I concur. Well, but you don't even I, know I what they're it, selling. Which that's how good it is. That's a Ute, isn't it? Kia you, yeah. Yeah. Well, I knew. Yeah. But the other thing, to be able to bring those calibre of stars... I must have spent a bit. Wow. Well, yeah, but, well, they obviously couldn't afford you. Who was the cheapest one there, you reckon? 
I'm not touching that. <laughs> Turning well, me might have been. Too- <laughs> no, what, no. What, what would uh, what would have cost Kia oh, to get you there? I don't know. Hundred k. I by the way, they're not a bad car. They're a good car. Yeah, very spacious, very kid friendly. Yep, and they uh, they look after the Australian They've Open every year. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, very good car. I was just I was surprised we didn't see the number eighteen in the um in the park. No, no, no at all. Interesting. Now, what about St Kilda? Played Geelong on the weekend. Are they becoming irrelevant? No, I love what Ross, Ross Lyon has done with the I Saints. I know you love Ross Lyon, but yeah, uh, they, they had a chance. No they, they had a chance to. Oh, win. sorry, outside of King, they had a chance to win that game. They did. So I'm um, and down at the Cattery, uh, I think that's uh, that's a pretty good effort. I know that Ross will be disappointed, but yep. I, I I'm looking at that saying. That's a tick for St Kilda. They can take Geelong. We're not sure how good Geelong's going to be this year, but if they can do that, um, I, I, I think that's a positive. Uh, the other thing that I took from that game, Joel Selwood getting – he's got it, the grandstand, Joel Selwood stand, opening of that. He's a superstar. One of the I, – I love Joel Selwood. He's, he's um, you know, arguably one of the best captains the game has ever seen. Not arguably, he's, he is one of the best captains the game has ever – ever seen um just a star in every way and uh fully deserved well, loved it well done to joel selwood the other thing i get asked a lot i'm not sure whether you do joel selwood what's he like behind the scenes as a bloke no, he's a beauty very caring have you had much I, to do with him um a little oh well just conversations and he's, he's one of those guys walks up first thing he says is oh how's how's uh, jess how are the kids yep. you know he's one of those he's he's a he's a beautiful Beautiful boy. Uh, I'm allowed a, to call him a boy because I'm way older than him. But well, yeah. you turn and he's doing. And you know what? And I think that he's been good in the media as well. Yep, yep. He I, certainly has a, I, an opinion. I, yeah, and I think that he he articulates himself. He doesn't talk too much, um, and he's is succinct in his comments. Well, now, when you um, give up your abstinence of alcohol, is he the sort of bloke that you'd ring and say, "Let's go and have a beer at the pub on a Saturday"? Would he be? Yeah, I reckon he would. He's interesting enough. Yeah, good. There's others out there you probably wouldn't. They're a bit stiff. Well, but names, I names. This right. is the truth. Hurts. <laughs> there's plenty. <laughs> we might. Well, well, yeah. There's plenty to do. But and he's part of the Mosh family. He well, he is part of the Mosh family he as is well. Part of the Mosh family. Joel's popping the pill, and uh, the hair's grown. The feathers have grown back. <laughs> yes. No need to wear a hat anymore, um, or you know, feel shy. Yep. So no, he's one of those, but. Uh, There'll be plenty to talk about, um, given that we're at round one. Um, so many predictions. You know, you had everyone, oh, Collingwood, you know, they're, they're unbackable for the flag. They're going to go back to back. How long is this dynasty going to go on for? So there's going to be plenty to call, talk about in the, uh, in the coming weeks. But um, I've enjoyed having a chat with you today, Tone. I'm glad. It's been good. I've enjoyed we've, it. We've covered, uh, we've covered a, a, a little bit. We're speaking to, uh, as I said, we're going to do a... a Bit of a chat around boxing, and I know that uh, you're mates with uh, the man, Anthony the Man Mundine. Yes, we're wanted, catching up with him on Friday. We are, and I want to talk a little bit about him because I believe that he's he's um, he's special. He is special. He's special in his uh, in his own unique way. So we'll do that in the uh, in the other little episode that we do about boxing. Thanks for uh, being here today, Tone. It's been a pleasure, Wayne. 